So the first cars were very strange objects. They were never seen before. They were driving the streets with noisy engines and stinky fumes. And it was particular about them that they had a charm. They had the charm of the future. But future is always very scary. And we started panicking about it. And especially coachmen started panicking. How to defend their work? In 1865, we had a Red Flag Act, a law that was imposing cars to drive only at three kilometers per hour with a man in front of it flagging a red flag in order to advance them in, into the danger that it was coming. And in reality, that red flag was uh, something that wanted to protect the coachman from the competition in the future. But we have all seen how it ended. What we have now is horses in stables and uh, sometimes carriages in our cities that are of use only of tourists. The same willingness um, of future and novelty is uh, what we are experiencing today in the era of the fourth industrial revolution, where the most disruptive technology is artificial intelligence. AI, together with uh, uh, other emerging technologies and robots, are producing incredible changes in our society. For many centuries, we have lived in a situation where we were adapting to machines that were substituting our physical work. And we are now instead looking in, in forward to an era where AI is the possibility of uh, uh, changing our brain capacities. So the idea of machines taking away our job is uh, usually extremely scary, and we are panicking. The fourth industrial revolution is not an exception to any other revolution that we had before. In 2016, the International Labour Organization announced that uh, the Southeast Asian nations will see 80% of the workforce in danger for what was coming in with robotization. And we got bombarded by warning messages from media that push regulators to confront technology with new red flag acts. In 2018, at the Italian digital agency where I was working in cooperation with uh, uh, the HER, uh, a research institute on, on the human ecosystem relations, we launched the uh, Italian Observatory on Artificial Intelligence. And thanks to sentiment analysis, we actually went down and thanks to natural language processing and sentiment analysis, we, we analyzed what was really the main feeling of people. And the result was that only 3% of the population was really scared about artificial intelligence, while 53, 54% had no whatsoever idea what artificial intelligence was. And of course, we are always afraid of the unknown. What we know is that there will be advances on mechanic and routine tasks. Thanks to the process of automation, routine tasks will be replaced for sure. And uh, we will be able to have our own time spent in much more creative tasks. This is what they say. 
When certain jobs become redundant due to automation, the generation of new jobs counteract those losses. We need to make the most out of artificial intelligence uh, and uh, the opportunities and benefits that it carries. We can, use, we can use artificial intelligence to increase competitiveness. We can uh, use to reduce production cost. We can uh, actually use it to perform dangerous tasks that uh, uh, will endanger our lives. But also look at the positive things uh, in the way we are able to use technology to speak with other interlocutors without knowing their languages. We all use translate when uh, we try to speak in another language. And AI, it, it has the capacity to enhance our culture, uh, but as well our entertainment, our uh, bureaucratic procedures. We are experiencing indeed a great transition scenarios between jobs or tasks that arise. Others that have transformed and there will be jobs that will tend to disappear for sure. The pre-digital workers will leave space to the millennials and uh, we will just need to make sure that we upskill people to adapt to what is coming. And we need to focus very well on the skills development of those that will lose the work and the jobs that they're doing and are not able to reskill properly. So the perception of unemployment, as I said, is not a new phenomenon and is probably based on concrete things that emphasize it. There is an example of uh, Foxconn that is uh, one of the most uh, important uh, electronic uh, manufacturers in China that in 2016 had the necessity to uh, replace almost 60,000 people thanks to robots. And they expect to replace in the next 10 years 80% of the workforce thanks to automation. But paradoxically, what is true is that the majority of countries that are investing in artificial intelligence and robotics are not seeing their job unemployment rates raise. It is almost impossible to know the consequences of the tsunami while it happens. In the 19th century, like for the horses that we saw, a manual loom worker had no idea that the job he was losing was generating more and more jobs and tasks. But the inability to project the opportunities granted by such technological changes produce fear linked to apocalyptic scenarios as we saw in the news. And we want to control those at any cost. The fourth industrial revolution and its emerging technologies involve too many disruptive factors that hindered the establishment of casual correlation with a certain degree of success regarding the direct and indirect effects on employment. And as we need to confront with the tsunami, I tend to search in this sentence a solution. Technology is capable of doing great things, but it doesn't want anything. It's all up to us. It's all up to our values and our love of beauty, our love of mankind. And in order to better understand how AI and work will be building a new employment paradigm, together with a few colleagues of the University of Buenos Aires, we wrote a book about it in order to unveil 
what is really happening. And we took a lot of examples that are out there that actually expose that love for beauty and that love for progression in, into our own uh, environments. And there are several examples that we collected, such as robotic surgery that allows the surgeon to perform surgical intervention remotely, or platforms that automatically adapt, allow the optimization of the crop and calculate the incidence of sunlight they receive to better understand how and where to put pesticides. If we observe these kind of projects, it is evident that the combination of human workforce and AI systems under an inclusive approach produces the phenomenon we have called automation that humanizes. It is essential that in the short and medium term, favorable environments are created so that workers can add value to other existing tasks or develop skills linked to uh, those that have been created. And I always want to remind yourself, we need to counteract the fact that our hands are not a technological device to hold the phone. They are part of our body, and we need to control better our hands in order to do better. Demand already now focuses on roles such as data analysis and AI uh, progression and development, uh, drone pilots, software and app developers, e-commerce e specialists, and uh, we need to take the most out of it. We need to know technology in order to be able to work with it. And in order to avoid the bad effects of the use of AI, we need to tackle the issue extremely well. We cannot initiate a technological progress without being prepared to follow it up and control it in every step if we don't want to end up like we did in the Netherlands, just uh, announcing it a few days ago. Technological advances bring a strong labor demand. That is evident. The question is what type of labor and which skills are demanded? Here we enter into a field of uh, systems and, and things that we need to uh, put up in our resumes uh, very soon. So, digital skills are technical, cognitive, social, emotional skills that allow people to align with the challenges of the digital life. The consolidation of those skills is crucial in younger generations, but even more in adults and in vulnerable people so that they are not left behind. Creative thinking, development and emotional intelligence, complex human interaction and social emotional skills are the key to present the future of the employment. Although many AI and robotics projects focus on those more human areas, the reality is that machines are very far from being activated in such fields. And it's not longer enough for a worker to study a career at, and at the point of that formation stop it. We need to constantly learn and upskill ourselves. In this context of constant uh, demand for new job skills, companies and state need to play a much more essential role. In order to increase their efficiency and become inclusive, they must transform substantially. We need to alphabetize and create adequate conditions for people to adapt to working with robots and intelligent systems. We are going into an era of full cobotization, 
where humans, robots, and AI will be more and more integrated. AI requires a new labor paradigm. And it is important not only to have experts in specific technical disciplines, such as machine learning or data analysis, but it's also important to make other important parts of our sciences, the human sciences, based on the capacity to understand how they cope in the interaction with AI and uh, the technologies. If the latest industrial revolution have created more job positions than uh, the ones that were eliminated, are there any reasons that we think the fourth industrial revolution will be any different? Even though it's very, very difficult to predict the facts that uh, emerging technologies and that tsunami we are living in can produce in our society, we need to think positive about the benefit it brings. And we need to make our utmost to reduce the risk and face challenges instead of making fatalistic predictions. Although there are multiple risks and challenges to address, AI is a great opportunity to humanize jobs, improve sustainable development, and optimize people's rights. Definitely, you must be conscious of the fact that this fourth industrial revolution is bringing a sky of possibilities. And it's up to you to decide to be the horses of the 19th century or to be the humans of the future. Thank you so much.